Hi guys, I welcome you all to the next lecture in our anthropology series. So yesterday we had started cognitive theories. I told you the approach for cognitive theory, uh, this school is a bit different because uh, here we do not have like, see we are reading two people, Conklin and Taylor, right? And aisa nahi hai ki, you know, they have, you know, different perspective towards the thing or they have developed the school, so to say, because jab hum pad rahe the, when we were reading about like, for example, diffusionism or classical evolutionism, they all had, you know, their own understanding of in, do, in that school, though the basic idea was same, but then they were also, uh, you know, we had certain good amount of uh, literature on that, ki unho ne, uh, for example, Taylor ne kya kiya, E.B. Taylor ne kya kiya, or what did Morgan do, or what was the work of uh, Radcliffe Brown, right? But in Conklin and Taylor, because this school is a synthesis, you can say cognitive theory is a synthesis of a lot of people. A lot of people have worked in this school and they are outside the purview of our syllabus. So for that, I, we have just synthesized the whole cognitive theories, not only the works of Taylor and Conklin, but the work of good enough, okay? There was a person, a big name in this, good enough, okay? Then there, uh, there, there is Andrade, Andrade, I don't remember the spelling now. So he was the person. So cognitive theories is a work of a lot of people, right? So what we have done is we have synthesized the whole theory which uh, I'll just give you a gist of it again and then we'll just uh, see from the tail uh, if the question comes on Taylor what do we have to write because ultimately we are studying it for the paper point of view right so how you have to attempt that and then we'll do the evaluation criticism of the school okay so same what we were studying in Conklin it's nothing very different uh, the same idea you have to apply again basically I'll just give you the gist of the school let me color change the color yes so cognitive anthropology school started around 1950s okay then in 1960s to 1970s even the school uh, you know further further you can say renewed their perspective or renew not the perspective but the methodology okay and now their achievements kya thi? Matlab, what were the positives the positives were the methodology because methodology was very sophisticated. They were using structured interviews. Okay? They were using uh, new ethnology, just, which was based on linguistics. Okay? Their ideas were very logical. They believed that the, the rules or the culture are based on certain rules and regulations. These rules and regulations are systematic, systematized or classified in the minds of the people. Okay? And they were trying to read it very logically or scientifically. So that is why the school was also, uh, you know, they gave a new methodology called the new ethno, ethnography or ethno, uh, ethno semantics, right? Ethno linguistics. Okay? These were the names given to their work. Okay? Uh, right. So this was a little bit of the background. Total baat humne kari hai that they were influenced by structuralism that means there is structures that are there in the minds of the people they were influenced by linguistics because they came up with a new idea or so to say because they wanted to study the emic perspective and for that to know the language was very important so linguistic became a very important mode of their studies so they tried to study the natives in their language hence you know uh, creating a, a you know a totally emic perspective okay so linguistics say influence the structuralism say in influence the okay so these were the things and just kya hai they were saying basically human culture is affected by human thought human thought jo hai, that is structured or classified we make categories in our minds which are in turn dependent on the culture and this culture is in turn dependent on the human thought. So it's a, you can say it's a circle. Material aspect, non-material aspect ko, uh, you know, influence kar raha hai or non-material material ko, okay? So this 
so similar things similar what we have studied in these 3 4 days same we have to write uh, sorry not 3 4 days yesterday we did the cognitive anthropology same you have to write in if you are asked about stephen taylor also you have to write about cognitive anthropology its introduction meaning historical background theek hai methodology linguistic base thi theek hai then premises premises kya the structuralism pe base tha theek hai all of that so jo same humne likha hai main aapko ek baar dikha bhi deti hu this part that studies rela- uh, school of thought likhna that means the introduction relation hai human thought and human culture mein theek hai culture is not a material phenomena that means it is in the mind of the people the school is associated with psychology structuralism linguistic theek hai anthropology logical according to them that is why they wanted to create ethno science theek hai and they use the emic perspective ye starting ho gaya then you will write about the historical background that means developed in the us theek hai influence tha from the emic perspective or the cultural relativism linguistics this was this will come in the methodology theek hai then relied on ethnography structured interviews theek hai and you can say dependent on language so you can quote sapir wolf hypothesis also uske baad after that we'll study stephen taylor stephen taylor ne bhi again he uh, second the thought of cognitive theories by giving us examples what example did he give he gave the example of the koya tribe koya tri- tribe of india so what happens again they were comparing the the western with the non western or this time it was the koya tribe of india so in india the koya tribe they do not know the difference between you can say snow fog dew for them all of this is the same whereas in western culture they they differentiate it very precisely that what is snow what is fog what is dew right unke liye rain snow fog everything is different right but koya tribe ke liye they classify at uh, it as one that means in their mind in the mind of the koyas the category is not different there is only one category and that is kuch bhi uh, they call it manku they call it manku so in manku unke mind mein there is no structure structure set for rain fog snow unke liye it's only manku theek hai so if it is raining they'll call it manku if it's snowing it will call they will call it uh, manku because you know in india it hardly snows theek hai so if they do not again they haven't seen it in their culture right again bhai wali baat aa gayi they do not have it in their culture so how will they categorize it right they are not studying they are not studying geography theek hai like us ki you know even if we do not see ha- snow happening we will not know about it right so here you can say the culture is so much dependent on what they sorry the thought is so much dependent on what what they see in their culture because snow is not there they do not know it so everything for them is manku theek hai so this was his example between westerners and koya but the uh, one thing he said ki this example but then he said दो दे उनके लिए स्नो फॉग ड्यू रेन एवरीथिंग इज मंकू बट दे हैव सेवन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ बैम्बूज नाउ वॉट वेस्टर्न पीपल वुड सी एज वन टाइप ऑफ बैम्बू दे कैन दे नो सेवन टाइप्स ऑफ बैम्बूज वाई बिकॉज दे कल्चर इज अ लॉट क्लोजली कनेक्टेड विद बैम्बूज ठीक है उनका लाइफ बैम्बूज से कनेक्टेड है दैट इज वाई दे कैन टेल यू सेवन डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ bamboos where as westerns can only tell you one kind of bamboo even we uh, we will not know different types of bamboos right so this is what he also said that they have no differentiation in dew fog snow they all call it manku but then they can tell you seven different types of bamboos so this shows that different culture perceive same phenomena differently right for us snow fog is different बिकॉज हमारे कल्चर में इट मस्ट हैव अ कल्चरल सिग्निफिकेंस इन एनी कल्चर इफ इट डज नॉट हैव अ कल्चरल सिग्निफिकेंस 
they will not matter for example in the western culture i'll give you one more example in the western cultures na time is very important so you will see in the language english tenses bahut important hote right there is past there is past continuous there is past perfect right present continuous right so you can know ki past mein bhi kitne types hain there is past there is past perfect there is past continuous why because they value time english people value time and hence it can also be seen in their language so now you can you see how culture and human thought is you know dependent on each other or codependent right so language may you can understand a lot so cognitive theories ne language ko bahut jagah pe basis banaya to understand the people to understand the culture for example english may because there is so much importance of time ki aap tenses dekhoge tenses are very important whereas uh, hindi mein aisa nahi hota ya to it's past ya present ya future right whereas uh, i do not remember a tribe now unke liye i'll tell you उनके लिए क्या होता है कि जो प्रेजेंट है ना दैट इज नॉट ओनली टुडे उनके लिए प्रेजेंट है मान लो आ, कुछ एक मंथ पुरानी भी बात है ना फॉर देम इट्स प्रेजेंट ओनली ठीक है उनके लिए पुरानी बात बहुत फॉर देम यू नो पास टेंस इज वेरी यू नो मोर देन वन मंथ टू मंथ लाइक दैट फॉर देम वन मंथ वुड बी प्रेजेंट ओनली सो हेंस दैट विल शो देयर uh thinking about time what they believe time is right because they they do not think time very scientifically unke dimag mein you know bada scientific uh, time ka wo hota nahi hai they do not have the 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 calendars unke paas all all those things are not there now scientific say i do not mean ki very uh, progressive okay they have their own life they they live their life accordingly so unke liye present is one month old bhi ho sakta hai theek hai two month old bhi ho sakta hai but for us there are very discrete categories ki what would be present what would be future what would be past right like that is there in the english also so these are certain examples you need to think about theek hai so stephen taylor also believes that there are different cultures they perceive same phenomena differently for example the 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 concept of time theek hai the concept of time different from for tribal perspective different from the english perspective right then how people make sense of reality out of their own indigenous cognitive classifications and not of the anthropologist now if any person goes in the tribe theek hai with the with his own sense of time so he will find it very difficult to understand their categories because their classification their cognitive classification is very indigenous to what their culture is for example agar one month purana cheez unke liye present hai it might be uh, past for the anthropologist right so for them you need to make sense of reality of out of their own indigenous cognitive classifications how things are structured in their minds so how time is categorized in their mind you need to understand that first and then only you will be able to have the emic perspective and anthropologist ka kaam kya hai what is anthropologist uh, work is to understand their culture from their own perspective right not from your own right so this was uh, this what you have to write about stephen taylor also now let us look at the achievements of the whole school so basically achievements mein aayega that the school provided a very detailed and reliable description of cultures why detailed and reliable because they were giving a emic perspective they were they had introduced the concept of language or linguistics theek hai through which they tried to understand the natives perspective through their language so it it reduced the biasness the ideas of ethnocentrism also because if they do not understand time from the western perspective that doesn't that, that doesn't mean that they are savage or barbaric it is just that the concept of time is different for them right so think like that then they reveal certain inner workings of human mind so they also gave the idea of psychic unity as i told you yesterday also even they gave the idea of psychic unity but what was the idea of psychic unity for them that similar 
सिनेरियो वुड और सिमिलर स्टिमुलस विल क्रिएट और यू नो टेक आउट सिमिलर एक्शन इन पीपल एंड नॉट लाइक अ यूनिलीनियर एवोल्यूशन का परस्पेक्टिव द क्लासिकल एवोल्यूशनिस्ट वर गिविंग अ वेरी मोनोलिथिक आइडिया ऑफ वेरी मोनोलिथिक कल्चर दैट मीन्स सैवेज से बारबेरिक से सिविलाइज राइट दे वर नॉट सेंग लाइक दैट दे वर सेंग ओनली सिमिलर सर्कमस्टांसिस विल टेक आउट सिमिलर एक्शन फ्रॉम पीपल राइट सो दे वर रिवीलिंग द इनर वर्किंग्स ऑफ ह्यूमन माइंड दैट मीन्स देर आर सर्टन यूनिवर्सल स्ट्रक्चर्स दैट मैन क्रिएट्स दैट मीन्स स्ट्रक्चर्स आर देर क्लासिफिकेशन कैटेगराइजेशन इन माइंड इज देर बट दीज कैटेगराइजेशन दीज यू नो क्लासिफिकेशन इन द माइंड विल डिपेंड ऑन देयर ओन कल्चरल सेटिंग्स दैट मीन्स बॉज का कल्चरल रिलेटिविज्म का आइडिया राइट एंड अचीवमेंट में वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट की मेथडोलॉजी दे केम अप विद अ वेरी वेरी साइंटिफिक मेथडोलॉजी ऑफ स्टडिंग द कल्चर्स सो दैट वॉज इम्पॉर्टेंट दे वर यूजिंग न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज लाइक स्ट्रक्चर्ड इंटरव्यूज फील्ड वर्क एथनोग्राफीज राइट सो दैट वॉज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो ये अचीवमेंट्स होगी and then uh, the criticism would be that the theory was very abstract because they were what they were saying is uh, human thought is important in understanding human cultures and human thought jo hoti hai that is very abstract idea that means it's very subjective what i think you may not think the same way that means wahan pe there is a diversity right so agar diversity is so much that person to person things are changing then how can you come with a theory so they, la- they there was a lack of consensus on how to study the culture because as i told you cognitive theories it is not the work of only conklin or taylor it is the work of many other anthropologists theek hai who studied culture with different things like culture consensus theory then they studied it with semantics then uh, uh, you know folk taxonomies now this is something which will मतलब टेक अस इन टू वेरी डीप कॉन्सेप्ट बट दिस इज नॉट द पार्ट ऑफ आर सिलेबस टू से राइट सो वी आर नॉट कवरिंग दीज पार्ट दीज आर जस्ट डिफरेंट मेथडोलॉजीज दैट कॉग्नेटिव थेरिस्ट यूज सो देर वॉज नो कंसेंसिस देन हाउ शुड बी सिंथिसाइज द होल स्कूल और हाउ शुड बी स्टडी द कल्चर दो दे वॉन्टेड टू मेक इट साइंटिफिक एंड दे वॉन्टेड टू मेक इट वेरी लॉजिकल बेस्ड ऑन रूल्स एंड Uh, that but they could not make it because there was no consensus everybody was studying the culture based on their own methodologies okay it was abstract because subjectivity was a lot there because if if whenever you will start to engage psychological perspectives abstraction subjectivity will come right then the school was too extreme in cultural re- relativism because they were learning the language they were trying to understand the cultures in their own settings in their own language so if you delve so much deep into the emic perspective your objectivity somewhere loses because then you're not taking the etic perspective that means etic perspective ya outsider's perspective miss hone lag jata hai right because if you go so much deep into cultural relativism आपका एटिक पर्सपेक्टिव मिस होता है एंड एनी बडी हु इज नॉट नाउ अंडरस्टूड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट यू नीड टू गो ऑन वीकली आंसर राइटिंग सीरीज ठीक है देर इन द फर्स्ट वीक वन ओनली वी हैव डेल डीप इन टू एम ए कैटिक एंड कल्चरल रिलेटिविज्म गो वॉच दैट वीडियो ऑल्सो राइट सो टू मच कल्चरल रिलेटिविज्म वॉज देर सो एटिक पर्सपेक्टिव वॉज मिसिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ पर्सन हु इज प्रैक्टिसिंग सती विल ऑलवेज बिलीव इन इट राइट so what is the fun of understanding a habit which is not good or or harmful or inflicts pain on the dignity of certain person right then the school was static also because didn't talk about social change theek okay? hai everything is there in the mind structures are created in the mind how social change happens no discussion about that right so this was the whole school this was a little tough to understand i know but if you get the basic idea that there are structures that are created in our mind these structures then reflect upon the human thought process and are in turn in our culture okay so this is the whole idea you need to understand i hope you guys like the lecture 
uh, I think after this only postmodernism is le left and then we'll be uh, through with the anthropological theories. I hope you guys liked anthropological theories. They were tough and I wanted to simplify uh, as much as I can for you. So if you did, please guys like, share and subscribe. Thank you.